Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. In our top story, members of the Committee on Finance chaired by Senator Kurt V. Lee held a meeting at the Capitol building today to consider several measures that were proposed by Senator Myron Jackson at the request of Governor Kenneth Mapp, including Bill Number 32-0089 as it relates to the reprogramming of a portion of the proceeds from the matching funds to the VI Department of Education to finance critical maintenance need. Stephanie Brown reports. Governor Mapp called for a special session which was held on May 10th and senators sent the governor's bill to prospective committees. But the governor also made remarks that legislators changed language in the bills that he initially proposed. It's disingenuous for the governor to go to the public media and make some claims then if that wasn't the case. So. Following a number of gun-related incidents, including a shooting that happened earlier today, Senator VLA addressed viewers. That has been the third or fourth individual that have been uh, killed on St. Damas this week. And um, at some point, all of us as a community have to take responsibility for those individuals who are in our household. On the floor was a bill proposed for the reappropriation of funds to provide support to the Department of Sports, Parks and Recreation. To comply with the required mandate to provide and maintain parks and recreational facilities in good standard for the use of the general public. The Commission of Education is also said to receive reappropriated funds to assist with several infrastructural repairs, including one of its headquarters. The Virgin Islands Department of Education St. Thomas headquarters restrooms and employee lounge renovation will be part of this project. This portion of the project is budgeted at $89,136 which will encompass the renovation of all male and female restrooms and employee lounge, which has not been renovated in over 25 plus years. Are the members of the Committee of Finance voted to hold the bills. We're going to call the Commissioner of Finance next week to make sure that we have specific numbers that we can bring the amendment so that when we pass the bill, it's clear as to who is getting what and from what particular fund. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. Now, separate to, separately, lawmakers also considered Bill Number 32-0087 to authorize the Department of Property and Procurement to purchase property aligned with the Pauley Joseph Stadium and St. Croix Count on Two to keep you updated. Meanwhile, the government of the Virgin Islands has a need to increase personnel in specific departments that include the Virgin Islands Police Department, Bureau of Corrections, the Department of Education, as well as medical personnel with limited success. Qualified candidates to fill these positions are of great concern. One bill proposed on the Senate floor last evening enabled the administration of these agencies that have positions classified as difficult to recruit the ability to testify on how the lack of staff has hindered, hindered the quality and productivity of their services. Proposed bill number 32-0012 made provision to provide cash incentives and relocation payments to eligible candidates, but the bill was not supported by everyone on the legislative floor. Here's Stephanie Brown with more. Addressed first on the floor at the 32nd Legislators Committee of Workforce Development, Consumer Affairs and Culture was proposed Bill Number 32-0012, submitted by Senator Novell Francis, to establish a recruit and retention program for police and correctional officers, registered nurses, and teachers. The Assistant Director of Human Resources of the Virgin Islands Police Department informed that attracting qualified staff, especially police officers, has always has been a challenge for the department. Our new officers are leaving the department due to them receiving better job offers off island and locally based on their qualifications coupled with the training that we, they received from the department. This significantly affects the department in view of the investment in time and money into training these officers. The assistant director of the Bureau of Corrections informed that many consent decrees have pinpointed that the Bureau is understaffed, but benefits and pay wages have hindered the Bureau's productivity. We really do appreciate the fact that you're recognizing that we're really having difficulty retaining and recruiting individuals 
for the Bureau of Corrections. The director of the Division of Personnel stated that recruitment of law enforcement hasn't been necessarily been tied to the ability to attract talent, but instead the inability for candidates to pass examinations. The 253 of the candidates who applied did not pass the test. Not now, if I were the commissioner of education or any person in leadership in education, that would make me feel very sad. I'll take it a step further. I would be embarrassed. Senator Young chastised Governor Mapp for falsely implying to new UVI graduates that they would receive on-the-spot job. And Senator Nelson informed that this bill shouldn't be made into law because the Division of Personnel already has the authority to establish similar initiatives. So we have some system fixes to, to, to make, but this process of giving incentives in this manner is haphazard, chaotic, and is going to cause further demoralization of the workforce. I cannot in a right mind support this today. I cannot support it, period. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. The proposals in Bill Number 32-0012 read that for the recruitment or retention of police officers, $10,000 in cash incentive payments would be given to each eligible employee, and that offers would also stand for the Virgin Islands Bureau of Corrections and for registered nurses and certified teachers. Just a quick note, Governor Kenneth Mapp will be holding a press conference on Friday at Government House on St. Thomas. Be sure to tune in right here on News 2. We'll have highlights from that. Police say another broad daylight shooting. It has left residents shocked. This morning around 10 a.m., citizens called the 911 emergency call center and reported that a vehicle fired several shots in the area of Niski Center, St. Thomas. Here is VIPD with more. Glenn. Upon officers' arrival, they observed a black male who appeared to have sustained injuries due to the incident being transported via ambulance to the Royal Leicester Snyder Regional Medical Center emergency room for medical attention. They later traveled to the hospital and made contact with the victim, who was a black male that sustained a gunshot wound to his left side. The victim was treated and later released. This case is under active investigation by the Criminal Investigations Bureau, and all possible leads are being followed. Anyone has Having information about this crime, please contact the Virgin Islands Police Department Major Crime Unit at 340-774-2211. You can call the anonymous tip line Crime Stoppers VI at 1-800-222-TIPS or 911. Also on Wednesday, May 17th, at approximately 610, officers traveled to the Roy Schneider Hospital, and uh, that was regarding an assault victim. Upon officers' arrival, they say contact was made with the victim, who stated that he was involved in a verbal altercation with an unknown female when a male walked up to him and stabbed him. The victim went on to state that the male suspect fled the area on foot while he later called 911 for an ambulance. The victim sustained a laceration to his abdomen area and was admitted for further treatment. This case is presently under investigation by the Criminal Investigation Bureau. If you have any information regarding this incident, call the Investigation Bureau 774-2211, extension 5579-5556. You can also contact 911 Crime Stoppers or the Chief's Office or the Commissioner's Office as well. Police say on May 17, 2017, at approximately 7.05 p.m., officers were dispatched by the 911 emergency call center to Campo Rico Frederickstead in reference to a suicide. Upon arrival, officers made contact with a family member who stated that he found his brother hanging from the ceiling in his bedroom. Officers made an observation of the victim's bedroom and observed a black male individual lying on the floor. They also observed a white rope that was nailed to the beam in the ceiling. The victim was pronounced dead on the scene by emergency medical technicians technicians and was transported by the morgue attendant. The family did state that the victim suffers from a mental disorder. Well, keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers, You can see the Dow up 56, NASDAQ up 43, S&P 500 up at 8. Coming up on News 2, we have much more straight ahead. Be sure to tune in. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Well, turning to some Caribbean news, Jamaica is under a flash flood warning as the islands brace for more rains that is associated with a weather system that's moving across the island. Here is a special weather update. Hello, I'm Damian Mitchell. Jamaica remains under a flash flood warning as the island braces for more rains associated with a weather system that is moving across the island. Only the parishes of Westmoreland, Hanover and St. James have not reported any significant impact as a result of the rains. And the head of the Met Service, Evan Thompson, says the amount of rainfall over the past day has exceeded the usual amount seen for the entire month of May. Meanwhile, there was a desperate plea by residents of Sunnyside in Linstead St. Catherine this morning who were trapped for more than five hours by rising waters. This lady is outside from after three this morning with her twins and we have been calling for help. The twin, the babies, they, they are in their hands. Jamaica is a slack place, remember I told you. No help. This, they are the people on the other side. They over there are safer than us. We are in the valley, right? We cannot get to them over there. They have been telling us that we should leave our child and come out. This looks like somewhere where we can get out. We cannot get out and we have kids, pregnant ladies in the house, right? An elderly lady chop over there in their house. That house over there, five person chop over there. They cannot get out and it's not an upstairs house. It's not an upstairs house where they can go to the top. We need help down here. Some 30 marooned residents were eventually rescued by the Jamaica Defense Force, the Jamaica Fire Brigade, and the police. And Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who is now in the Dominican Republic on official business, will be cutting his visit short to return to the island tonight. He is expected to tour the worst affected areas of Jamaica tomorrow. In the meantime, the acting Prime Minister, Dr. Horace Chang, is urging people not to attempt to cross flooded roadways. And the Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, is reporting that some 12,000 customers in the parishes of Kingston, St. Andrew, Clarendon, St. James, St. Anne and St. Mary are now without electricity. Director of Communications at JPS, Winsome Callum, says the Light and Power Company has deployed its technical teams to restore service, but they are having challenges because of the wet soil conditions, continued rainfall and landslides. Meanwhile, a retaining wall near the Linstead exit on the North-South Highway today crumbled during heavy rains. An image of the crumbled wall has been evoking intense reactions on social media. Be sure to count on two to keep you updated. Turn our attention back here at home. Here's an update from WAPA. WAPA announces a traffic flow interruption in Polyburg Hill, St. Thomas on Friday from uh, 9 to 3, that's Friday, May 19th. During that time, WAPA water distribution crews will perform an exploratory excavation of the water main ahead of the upcoming potable water service connection for the new VI Fire Service Hotel Company headquarters. Friday's traffic interruption will affect the westbound lane from William G. Lewis, uh, Lewis Lover's Lane, that intersection to the J. Antonio Jarvis School Annex. The eastbound lane will remain open and unaffected. Motorists are asked to uh, adhere to directional signs for the safety of crews, pedestrians, and other drivers, and where possible, motorists should traverse on an alternate route. In addition, there will be a water service interruption along Polyburg Road between the Jarvis School Annex to the former Domingo gas station as a result of the planned excavation. The service interruption will also be from 9 a.m. to 3 and the Sheldon Mali High School will not be affected by the service interruption. WAPA apologizes for the inconvenience caused by this temporary road closure and service interruption. Well, here's an update from WICO and we shared a little bit about this yesterday. The Inner Birth Project is almost to an end as the company received a certificate of substantial completion from the contractor American Bridge Company of Tampa, Florida on April 26, 2017. The project engineer Jay Casey Long confirmed that upon final completion on or about May 31st, 2017, the WICO facility can safely birth two Oasis class vessels simultaneously. The singular use for the territory now is to have the harbor dredged so that these vessels can safely transit to the completed pier. The board acknowledges the current softness in the cruise industry as a result of the extensive competition from so many new destinations and cruise line owned private islands 
The board, therefore, made a full commitment to develop its seven acres of land adjacent to the southern end of the dock and proceeding upland to the road traversing the southeastern part of the property. The board allotted specific funding to its strategic planning committee to seek out potential investigators to engage in private public sector development. Phase one of the Havenside refurbishment project to the GERS-owned Havenside Mall is also nearing completion. The refurbishment of the facility is the WICO GERS response to calls from the industry and the merchant community to refresh the tourism product. Phase two encompasses the refiguration of the northeastern parking lot along with painting and canopy upgrades to re the remaining shop buildings. WICO and GERS long-term plans envisions demolishing the warehouse facing the dock front and replacing them with a modern structure that can possibly be a museum retail operation. WICO is working closely with GERS to seek an anchor tenant for this area. And finally, the board continues to follow Bill Number 32-0002 as it makes its way through the Rules Committee of the Legislature. The President and CEO will expound on the company's position when he testifies on the proposed measure. Well, we want to say kudos to the St. Patrick's School Steel Orchestra. They are the grand champions of the Virginia International Pan Fest competition that was held on May 13th in Virginia Beach, Virginia. The band competed against 27 other bands from across the United States to include Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, Florida, Ohio, and Ontario, Canada, and prevailed victorious. The competition is comprised of the elementary, high school, private school, and the community band category. Categories. The SBS Steel Orchestra entered the competition in the elementary category and they did a wonderful job. VIP organizers stated that the St. Patrick's Steel Orchestra has made VIP history as the first elementary band to win the overall competition, beating high school and adult bands. The band also won the elementary division with a rating of superior. Let's take a listen to a little snippet of the band. Again, congrats to our young musicians there. Well, mark this on your calendar. The next mental health awareness workshop is on sexually transmitted diseases. As you know, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. The Department of Health is hosting some workshops. The sexually transmitted diseases workshop, that will be held on May 22nd at 10 to 12 in the Barbell Plaza Conference Room. Sexually transmitted diseases, they say, are caused by infections that are passed from one person to another during sexual contact. These infections often do not cause any symptoms medically. Infections are only called diseases when they cause symptoms. That is why STDs are also called sexually transmitted infections. This presentation educates individuals on prevention, treatment, and community resources associated with STDs in the territory. Well, if you purchased a lottery ticket for today's drawing, you would have noticed it features a fabric we all know as Madras. This fabric originated in the city of Chennai, India, but it has become a major staple in Virgin Islands cultural wear. Now, this ticket celebrates an easily identifiable aspect of Virgin Islands history and culture, and they hope you are about to celebrate your winning tickets. Here are the winning lottery numbers. The VI Lottery presents draw results of today's drawing on News 2. Here are the top prizes. Fifth prize for $20,000, 14931. 14931. Fourth prize for $30,000, 10582. 10582. Third prize for $40,000, 9015. 9015. Second prize for $65,000, 7836. 7836. And the winning ticket number for the grand prize of $175,000 is 10330. 10330. If your ticket number wasn't called, keep trying. One of these days, your number could win. The next drawing is June 16th. Play the VI lottery and imagine the possibilities. Good luck as you check those tickets. Stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.
are here on vacation this week. Boy, did you pick a great time to come because the weather is beautiful. It has been the last couple of days and that will continue for the next couple of days as well. Let's take a look at our radar. Well, we are seeing a lot of precipitation and cloud coverage to the west of us. We're even seeing some downpours in parts of Puerto Rico today, but not here. Uh, those storms kind of break up before they get to our islands. So very pleasant conditions. 77 degrees, that is our low temperature for tonight. So a bit of a warm night for us, partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow, St. John, 85 degrees with plenty of sunshine. Put on that sunblock and grab those shades because it's gonna be beautiful outside. Same story uh, for St. Thomas, 85 degrees, and St. Croix, just a bit warmer, 87 degrees for the high temperature. And everyone could see a brief shower move through the area. Certainly not a washout, but we could see just some quick downpours at times. Nothing out of the uh, ordinary for this time of year. Taking a look at the marine forecast in the Atlantic, it's nice, three to five feet for your waves. Winds out of the east, 10 to 15 knots, and we don't have any advisories for you. Same story for the Caribbean, no advisories. Waves two to four feet and the winds out of the east, 10 to 15 knots. So everything is nice and calm uh, for the next couple of days. Now on Friday, we could see more frequent showers. That doesn't mean we're going to have a wet day by all means, but we could see uh, more frequent showers pass through the island, very brief. And uh, other than that, it's going to be beautiful. Lots of sunshine. Temperatures in the 80, 80s, 85 degrees the whole week and things dry out Saturday. Saturday through Monday, Tuesday could be just a bit breezy. Sandy, back to you. Thank you for that. Not too bad, as indicated there by Mia Pimtel picture right there with the sunshine and puffy white clouds. Third grader Mia, thank you for that. We love your little love booth there. Send us your news to weather picture to the address right there on the screen. Be sure to include all the info we need, your name, age, school, brief description of your work of art, and of course, tune in to see it right here on News 2. Well, don't, uh, don't go anywhere. We have sports coming your way next. I'm Gary Anthony and this is News 2 Sports. In March, 23 football players from St. Croix traveled to St. Thomas to participate in the football showcase that was organized by St. Thomas's coach, Francisco Jarvis. To date, five players from St. Croix have signed letters of intent to play college football in Minnesota. Today, in front of family, friends, and coaches, and in Central High's library, Akili Manuel signed his letter of intent to play either offensive or defensive tackle at Masabi College in Minnesota. That's Masabi Range College in Minnesota. And I want to thank all my coaches, all of them over there. They push all of us hard. Like, that's why we went out this year and blow complex because of them. I am very proud of my son. He's my only child. He had the option to go and attend a regular university and a scholarship, whereas his grade point average is high enough to receive scholarships. He would have been able to go to Lincoln University on a full ride, but he opted out, said he's going to go to the junior college, develop his skills to play football. So. I'm just backing him 100%. Because when he go up to Minnesota and, and they see the skills he have for a big guy, he have speed, and every college is going to want him. So he have a bright future. All he have to do is maintain and do what he's supposed to do up there. So he got the toughness, he's got the size, and he can move very well for his size at that position that he's going to play. So looking forward to big things from him. This is one of my adopted 23. So. I'm proud of them. I just wish all the kids the best of luck and whatever they learn here at the institution, at home, take it where they go. Do not pick up anybody bad habit, just do what they have to do. Focus, study, education first, sports second, and you will go a long way. 
From the library to the hoop, and in case you missed it, last night the NBA Eastern Conference Finals got underway in Boston. It's the Celtics versus the Cavaliers, game one in the best of seven series. And this game was not even close. LeBron, he is well rested and ready to go. We're going to pick things up in the third quarter. The Cavs are already up by 25, and LeBron, like a hot knife through butter, just slices through the Celtic defense. The Cavs, they go on to roll the Celtics in Boston, 117-104, to take a 1-0 series lead. Game two is tomorrow night in Boston. That's it for sports. Congratulations, Akeel Emanuel. Sandy, back to you. That's right, Akeel. All the best. Congrats to you, and thanks for keeping us updated. Gary, thank you for that. That is all for this edition. We'd like to thank you for joining us for all the latest in news, weather, and sports. I'm Sandra Gumansing. We'll see you next time.